through the rules of the sale, do a little Q&A before we get started so that everybody's a little bit more comfortable with what they're doing and has a better idea. Answer those questions you've got lingering in your mind. You have to have a valid photo ID in order to bid today. You have to be registered prior to placing a bid. When you bid today, you're accepting the rules of the sale. They're printed in the little book. You've all got a copy of all the rules and regulations. You can read through them while we're getting to the parcel that you want sold today. Remember that you are bound by those rules of sale when you bid today, so make sure you understand them before you bid. These properties have been through a judicial foreclosure process. People ask us all the time, I heard that the last owner can come in and pay the taxes and get the property back. Is that true? And the answer is absolutely not. They would have to go to court and get a judgment overturned. That'd be an expensive and difficult process. There's been about a two year process that's been in place here, sending tax bills, sending notices, holding hearings, publishing things in the newspaper. People have been out to each and every one of these properties. If there was somebody there, they knocked on the door and talked to them. If there was nobody there, they posted it. It's been to court. We have done all kinds of notice on these properties, including going and seeing the judge. We went and saw the judge and said, Your Honor, we would like an order of the court, a judgment, whatever you want to call it, that clears title to this property and puts it in the name of the county treasurer. And the judge said, OK. Everybody that had an interest in these properties under a deed or a land contract, they're gone. Mortgages, security agreements, construction liens, old utility bills, condo and property owner association fees, tax liens, everything of that kind was nuked as of March 31st, 2017. Everybody that had an interest in these properties was sent plenty of notice. They had until the end of March to pay or they lost their interest in the property. There's a court order on file. It lists these properties. It's up at the courthouse in the circuit court for the county where the property is located. Some things are not e eliminated. They're not affected at all by tax foreclosure. Those include easements. If you buy a piece of property and it's got an easement across it for somebody else to access another piece of property for a utility company to have their lines there, whatever it may be, those easements are still there. If you buy a piece of property today that does not have any frontage on a road, it very well may have an easement across somebody else's property to get to it. That easement would also still be in place. Mineral rights. If the mineral rights have been kept by a former owner, if they have been sold off to a third party in the past, they're still split. If the last owner of the property had the mineral rights, you get them as part of the deal today. If they didn't have them, don't get them. We don't study them because they're not affected or canceled by the tax foreclosure. Any deed restrictions, condominium master deed covenants, zoning ordinances, local ordinances, building codes, all of the regulation of the property is unaffected. They're still in place. You can't tell the local building inspector that your property you bought at the tax sale is now a sovereign nation and you don't recognize his laws. That doesn't work very well at all. I don't think we've got any crops, any large acreage with crops on it today, but if we do, if you buy something today and you go out there after the sale and it's got a bunch of corn on it, it's not your corn. Part of our uh, agreement today is that we are reserving the right to harvest of any crops, any seasonal crops planted on properties you buy today are going to remain in the persona of the person that planted them. If you buy a piece of property and it's got wheat or corn or hay or something on it, at the end of the season when it's harvest time, it belongs to whoever planted it. It is not yours. However, if you buy something today and go out there and find a whole bunch of 10 foot tall marijuana plants, we're not getting involved in that one at all. Don't call us. Please make sure you know what you're bidding on today. We get people in here that are operating on bad information. They bid on something. Then they want to cancel the sale and get their money back. We can save you the call. That answer is no. When you buy it today, it's yours. There are no refunds. Everything today is sold as is in every respect. No guarantees, no warranties. The only representation that we are making today is that legal description of property in the book that's in your hands. It's either a measured description, or it's a subdivision name and a lot number, or it's a condominium plat name and a unit number. That's what you're buying today. 
You're not buying an address. You're not buying a photograph. You're not buying what you think is there. You're buying what's there. The sale is by quick claim deed. There's no guarantee you can get title insurance for it. Everything is sold as is, where is, in every regard. Many of the properties we're selling today have a lot of problems. That's why they are here in many, many situations. They can have, if they were built before the middle 1970s, most of you are old enough to remember that you should not pick and eat the paint. Give you a bellyache. They could have lead-based paint, asbestos, infestation, failing foundations, frozen plumbing, leaking roofs, broken windows, infestations of things like termites and cockroaches, underground storage tanks still full of oozing goo. You can have contaminated soils. You can have bad uh, water and septic lines. Many, many problems with these properties that we may or may not know about. We may or may not have disclosed them, but you're buying everything today that house on the screen right there, I've been selling these properties now for 17 years. That is the only one I've ever, ever, ever seen that has every problem on that list. <laughs> that piece of property is in Ontonagon County. It's just north of Bruce Crossing, right behind Mr. Yusamaki's place. In 17 years, we have sold that piece of property right there on the screen three times. Because people don't pay attention, they buy something because they think they're getting a great deal, and then they end up with something that is the first award winner in the problem department. Please make sure that you know what you're bidding on. We've sold that one three times in 17 years. We were up in Watersmeet having an auction last Saturday, and guess what? It's on the list this year, too. There it is, right there. It didn't sell. I can't imagine why it didn't sell, but somebody might still end up with that because there's still that opportunity. There's still that potential for somebody to buy that. So please, make sure you know what you're bidding on today. There are no refunds. This ain't Walmart. You can't bring it back. Here's what we're doing today. We've got a, we've got a book. Everybody's got a copy of it. It's full of parcels that are being offered today. Some of these parcels nobody wants. They look like that. The parcels that nobody has expressed interest in, we're gonna skip. We've had you go to the clerks, tell them what you're here to bid on today. We're gonna ask before we skip things. If nobody wants it, we're not gonna waste your time trying to sell it. We've got seven pieces in this book that are pretty popular that people out in the hallway said, yeah, I'm here to bid on that one. And so are a bunch of other people. We're gonna sell those seven pieces first so that a lot of people in here waiting on those particular pieces can get on down the road. Then we're gonna go back to the beginning of the book and sell them in order, skipping the pieces nobody's here to bid on today. I'll tell you what those seven pieces are when it's time to start the sale, but we're gonna sell the most popular pieces first Generally, they've got 15 or 20 or 30 people here to bid on them. Then we're gonna go back and sell the stuff that have one or two people chasing them. So that's how that works today. When we open up property for bidding, here's how it happens. In your book, you're gonna see a minimum bid number. We don't just make that up. That's not a number that's plucked out of thin air. That is the back taxes. It's the cost of two years worth of foreclosure processing. It's the cost of sending somebody out there to knock on the door. Sometimes we have to mow lawns, we have to hire an attorney to solve something, things of that nature. Whatever that specific property owes the county is what that minimum bid is. We're going to start the bidding either at that price or a higher one if I've already got a bid online. We've had these properties on the website. People have been allowed to bid on them before the sale up till 11 o'clock this morning. I have a copy of those bids in front of me. I know how many are on each property and how high they'll go. If we already have a higher bid online, we're going to start at the higher bid number. Once a piece of property is opened up for bidding, we increase by the increments you see on the screen. If we open up and we're at less than $1,000, we go up in round numbers at least $50 at a time. 350, 400, 450, 500, not 401, not 417, round numbers in those increments. Between 1,000 and 10,000, we go up at least $100 at a time. 
Over $10,000, the minimum bid increase is $250. People that are bidding online can only go up one bid increment at a time in those that you see on the screen. So they're a little limited. If we have people just bidding online, it goes a little slower. You guys in the room could do something that's called jumping the bid. Sometimes there'll be a piece of property that maybe we open it up at a couple thousand dollars and there are people in the room bidding. This guy's bidding 2100 and then that's 2200 and 2300 and you're sitting in the back and you go, I want that piece really bad and I'm in a hurry. So you just stand up and shout out, $52,000. You're gonna get my immediate undivided attention. That's called jumping the bid. You're stepping on the gas pedal. You wanna to get to where we're going a little bit faster. On the seven pieces we're gonna sell first that are real popular, you're gonna see some of that happen. I might ask who wants to jump the bid voluntarily. We had a piece of property we sold up in Owasso yesterday. Our, our, bidding, our bid increments we were jumping were $5,000 at a time. Rather than go from zero to $100,000 and taking two hours to do it, we got there in about five seconds. It was just bam, bam, bam. So we might ask if anybody wants to jump the bid on certain pieces that are real popular. If I'm looking down at my list and I know that I've got a $40,000 bid online and we're at $300 in the room and I have a bunch of people that want to bid, we're not going to go at $100 a time. We've had these sales run until 11.30 at night before. We don't like doing those. We'd rather be out of here by three. So that's what jumping the bid is all about. This is important stuff here. Many of you have never been to these sales. Some of you have been to these sales before. Some of you can't buy here today. It's against the law. If you have any property in Bay or Tuscola counties with delinquent taxes, we can't sell to you and you can't buy today. You can't even try to buy. Your sale will be canceled. Delinquent property taxes. Here's the definition for you. If you get your tax bills from the city or the village or the township and you pay them promptly, you're good to go. If you have any tax bills on your desk at home that are from the county treasurer, you have a delinquent tax, you can't bid today. If you have unpaid civil fines, that's where you have been penalized by a city, village, or township for not doing something, an ordinance violation, not mowing a lawn, junk cars, something of that nature, they have sent you a fine and you haven't paid it yet, you can't bid today either. Please don't try to bid anyway. We're gonna check every name against the delinquent tax roll. We've been catching people across the state that try to bid anyway. Their sale gets canceled and there's a criminal penalty for doing so. We'll tell you what that is in a second. This includes having somebody bid for you. We've seen all the little games being played. Sending in your brother-in-law with your check to pay for the property is not allowed. Having your brother-in-law registered and sitting next to you and when you want to bid on something and you, you know that you can't because you're delinquent, so you give him a good old elbow in the ribs and his card magically goes up. If we see that going on, we'll stop that too. Nobody can be listed on the deed for the property that has delinquent taxes. They can't pay for it. They can't have their fingerprints on it anywhere. This includes associations. If you are here today and you want to put something in the name of a business entity, we're going to make you fill out a form that gives the name and address of all the partners, members, whatever they might be in that group, that little business association. We're going to check each of them individually as well as the business name for delinquent taxes. If you co-own property with somebody else, if you have a piece of farm property that's owned by a bunch of your siblings, even though you don't really have much to do with it, if your name is on the title to that property and the taxes aren't paid, even if it's not your responsibility to pay for them, you can't bid today. And here's the one that catches the most people. If you have property you have sold to somebody else on a land contract, you hold the deed, somebody sends you a payment every month, if you're lucky. If their taxes aren't paid, you can't bid today because you have a title interest in delinquent lands in these counties and the legislature says, sorry, you can't bid. So those are the rules. Please keep them in mind. We have several kinds of bidders today, several ways people can participate. We have you guys in the room here today bidding live and in person. I have a list of bids placed online via the website before 11 o'clock this morning. 
I know how many they are, how high they'll go. That bidding closed at 11 o'clock today. There's a camera on a tripod right on top of that projector in the middle of the room. People can see and hear this auction online all over the planet. They've given us a $1,000 pre-authorization on a credit card. We've verified their identities. There are no fake identities. They've proven who they are. They can bid against you in real time, too. I want to mention to the people watching online, do not use the audio and video feed as your frame of reference for what's happening in the room because it's going to be delayed. Use the text on your screen if you want to know what's going on in real time. There's some other minor details and rules and regulations in the book. We're not going to go through all of them. It's pretty common sense stuff. When we sell something, it is sold. Any bid not received at the time of the sale is not valid. If you are clicking on your button at home on the internet and it's not getting through, it didn't get through. That's the risk of bidding online, especially bidding live online. You are entering into a legally binding contract when you bid today, and you're agreeing to the terms and conditions in the book. If you win today, you have to pay in full today. You don't have days or weeks to come up with the money, or to wait for a closing, or to go borrow some, do a mortgage or something. You have to pay today. This is a sale where you pay cash on the barrel head at the completion of the sale. You should have come prepared to pay within 30 minutes of the time that we end the sale. When the line is all done out there, we're going to look around and see if anybody's missing. And we hope everybody has paid. Generally, that's the case. But if you did not come prepared to pay in full today, you shouldn't be bidding. If you're bidding online, you're going to receive an email of instruction on how to pay within 24 hours. Slightly different rules because they're not here. They can't pay us right on the spot. They have a little bit of time, uh, several days, not in order to pay us. You'll get an email. If you don't see it, check your spam filter. If it's still not there, call the office. They're mighty helpful. First $1,000 you give us today, if you spend less than $1,000, you can just write us a check for the whole thing. If you're spending more than $1,000 today, the first $1,000 of that, according to the rules, we've been doing it this way for years, the first $1,000 should be a cashier's check made out to you. If you don't get to use it today, you can endorse it and put it right back in your bank account, same as cash. That $1,000 is a non-refundable deposit. Over and above $1,000, you can pay for the balance of your sale by a personal or business check, money orders, cashier's checks, or a credit card. That first $1,000 is a non-refundable deposit in the event that your check bounces, you don't get it back, and you don't get the property. We don't take cash anymore. If you brought a great big box of that, we can't help you with it. You're going to have to go down to Walmart, stand in line, and get a whole bunch of dollars. $500 money orders today or something. Here's the math. Here's how the payment part of it works when you get out to the table and it's time to check out and you're trying to do the math in your head before you bid because you want to know how far your money goes. Here's the final calculation. Here's how it works. There's going to be a bid price that we arrive at here in the room. The winning bid price. There are three things added to that. There's a 10% buyer premium. That's the cost of the auction and the marketing. $30 is the cost for recording a deed in the state of Michigan. Before you get the deed to the property, it's going to be taken to the Register of Deeds office. It's going to be recorded. They're going to make an image of it, and then they're going to mail it back to you. $30 is now the cost for recording any document in the state of Michigan, regardless of the number of pages. You're also going to be paying the summer tax bill today. Each property in the book at the end of the description has the summer tax amount for that piece of property listed right in the book. The legislature says we have to collect that before we can give you the deed, so we're just going to collect it today. So that's the math. The final bid price at 10%, at $30, add the summer taxes. If you're using a credit card today, and we do take credit cards, we take Visa, MasterCard, and Discover only. We do not take American Express. We do not take the Diners Club. We don't take the Shell Gas Card or beer cans. We have all the beer cans we can carry in the van right now. 2.75% is the fee that they charge us for you using a credit card and that is passed along to you if you use one. When it's time to check out, sometimes people want to go to their bank and get a cashier's check for the exact amount and pay it in full that way. If you want to do that, if you need to run to your bank because you didn't bring that thousand dollar cashier's check with you, let the clerk in the hallway where you checked in know before you leave the property. Give them your bidder number. They'll collect your 
phone number and they'll be able to tell you right to the penny exactly what you need to come back with. That way, when the sale is over, if there's nobody standing around, we've checked everybody out, there's nobody in line, we can run a report and we'll know whether or not you plan on coming back and we'll have a way to get in touch with you. If you've not already done it online, most people have. There is a form in your book that says deed information on the top of it. We need to know what names to put on the deed to the property that you buy today. If you haven't already done it online, please fill that form out. Write it as legibly as you can. Please use your legal name, not your nickname. If your mama named you Robert, please use that and not Bubba. Fill it out before you get in line. It keeps things moving much quicker out there. If you're buying a piece of property today with some other people, you're buying something with friends, relatives, business partners, first of all, make sure they don't have any delinquent taxes. You might need to call them on the phone. But if you're gonna list somebody else on that deed information form and you're not married to them, we need to know what happens to somebody's ownership of the property if one of the co-owners dies. It's called tenancy. That's the legal term. There are several options. They're listed in your book. Take a look at them. Pick one out in the event that you're buying property today with somebody and you're not married to them. When you leave today, we are not going to be sending you out of here with a copy of the deed. The deed has not even been created yet. It's not like a car title. We don't sign it over and give it to you. We have to create a new one. And we don't do that until everybody's checks clear. It's about a four or five week process to create the deed, cash everybody's checks, get them to clear, take the deeds to the register deeds office, record them, they make a copy of it for their file, they index it into the computer system, an envelope, and it gets mailed back to you. That's gonna take better than a month. So what you're gonna have between now and the time that you get the deed in the mail is a receipt. They're going to give you the receipt to approve as part of your checkout process, they're going to ask you to initial it in several places, agreeing to various things. Here is what's on the receipt. First of all, they're gonna ask you to verify that everything on the receipt, all of the data that they put in is correct. Make sure your name is spelled properly, that it's your full legal name. If you have one of those names that people like to chop up and misspell all the time, check it two or three times, make sure it's correct. Make sure the address is where you want your tax bills to go in the future. Make sure the list of properties and the amounts are correct. When we sell each piece of property, I enter it right here in the computer I've got in front of me. I'm fully capable of fat fingering something and giving you the wrong piece of property. You don't want that to happen. Make sure that everything on that is correct before you sign it. If it's wrong on the receipt and you don't notice it until three weeks from now, you're gonna be getting a deed for the wrong piece of property or your name's gonna be spelled wrong on it. Triple check it you sign the receipt today. You're going to be agreeing to the terms of sale, the rules and regulations, the things we're talking about right now. You're agreeing that you're purchasing the property as is, that you've had the opportunity to go out and inspect it even if you didn't drive by it at all. You had that opportunity and you're agreeing to that. Here's kind of an important one. We just told you that you're not going to have the deed to that property for about five weeks. Technically, under the law, until that deed is in your hand, it comes to you, it's in your mailbox, you open the envelope and you've got it right there. Until that event has happened, you do not own the property. You're the buyer of the property. It's just like making an offer on something and until you go to the closing table and sign the documents, you don't own it. Technically, you should not set foot on this land until you have that deed and that's gonna be about five weeks. That's technically. We've been doing this an awful long time. We know how this works. We're gonna sell you this piece of property today and we could tell you that you should not have five weeks and you're going to be inside there by five o'clock tonight anyway. <laughs> right? Let's not lie about it. Therefore, we're going to make a little provision in our agreement today that says this. We're going to give you possession as long as there's nobody already there. If it's occupied, it's a different set of rules and we'll talk about that in a minute. If it's vacant land, if it's a building and there's nobody in it, we're giving you possession today because you're gonna take it anyway. 
We're giving you possession for very specific purposes. We're going to have a written understanding and agreement about it. We're going to let you have possession of the property for the purposes and only the purposes of security, maintenance, and inspection. You do not have authorization to move in. You do not have authorization to make changes to the property, to start remodeling, to start ripping things apart. You can't do any of those things until you have the deed. And here's why. In Michigan, the law gives the treasurer the undisputed unilateral authority to cancel your sale if we need to until that deed is delivered. If you go out this weekend and put a roof on it because you're afraid the winter's coming in two weeks and we have to cancel your sale, you bought somebody else a roof. Once in a great, great while, and we sell for 70 counties in the state of Michigan, we sell thousands of pieces of properties every year. Once in a while, probably once every second year, we have to cancel one sale somewhere because something wasn't right. Something in the foreclosure process wasn't done right. Generally, we find out somebody was protected by a bankruptcy court that we were not aware of from way back before it was foreclosed, or somebody had a guardian and the guardian didn't know anything about it. Also, these things would have had to have happened before March. They can't run in tomorrow and file bankruptcy and stop it. But if we were unaware of something and we didn't have the authority to sell the property, the sale gets canceled and what you get back is what you paid today and not a penny more. So don't make a bunch of improvements to the property until you have the deed. Here is the agreement though, in the interim, until you get the deed, you can go inside the property, you can change the locks, you can board up broken windows. If you wanna mow the lawn, knock yourself out. Do those low cost supervisory things. If you wanna go in and start eyeballing the plumbing, looking at the leak in the roof, checking out the inside of the property, measuring for carpet, go ahead and do those things. Don't start spending money don't move in until you have the deed. Part of your checkout process today is that you are indemnifying the county, the seller of the property, from any claim for injury, loss, or damage. If you're injured on the property, you're absolving the county from liability for that. If you leave your table saw in there and somebody comes along and steals it in the middle of the night next week, it's on you. Keep in mind that we're giving you possession before closing for the purposes of inspection, security, and maintenance only. The final part of your checkout process today, we talked about this a minute ago, you can't have delinquent taxes and purchase property today. We are required by the law to administer a sworn statement as part of the checkout process. All of the clerks out there are notary publics. They are witnesses of the state. It's like testifying before the judge when you execute your receipt out there, and they're going to ask you to basically state for the record that you do not have any delinquent taxes, you don't have any unpaid civil fines, you're not bidding for somebody that does, you're not listing anybody on the deed that does, nobody is supplying you with money to pay for this that does, nobody involved at in all in this process has any delinquent taxes. If you misrepresent that, you can't forget about the 12 pieces of property that you have that have delinquent taxes on them. Forgetting is not an excuse. If you make a statement to the clerks out there, you misrepresent your delinquent tax status, it is called perjury in the state of Michigan. Perjury is a felony. It is not a misdemeanor. We've had several people try. Their sales were canceled. The files have been sent to the prosecuting attorneys for prosecution as a felony perjury case. It is not worth trying to get around the rules today to get a good deal on a piece of property because you can't enjoy it very well when you're sitting up at the pen. Here's a form you have some time to fill out. We don't need this one back today, but if you buy something, you have to send it in. It's the last page in your sale book. It's the Michigan Property Transfer Affidavit. You have 45 days to send this into the city, the village, or the township assessor where the property you buy today is located. You're gonna tell them where you want the tax bill sent from now on. You're gonna tell them how much you paid and that you bought it from the Bay or Tuscola County Treasurer. There are a bunch of check boxes on the bottom half of that. Don't check any of those. Some of them look like they might apply, they don't. Those are reasons that the property is exempt from being reassessed. You don't want it to be exempt. You want them to go out there the quality of the notice 
during the foreclosure process itself they have some brochures from some of the title insurance companies out of the desk you can ask for one of those some of the people that are more experienced in this they may have quicker turnaround they may have better prices your local title insurance agent may also be able to help you or they may not it's up to you but if you want a couple of resources there are some on the screen as i mentioned there are some flyers available from at the checkout if you want information on title insurance. This is important stuff here as well. April 1st is the effective date of your purchase. You're buying it at the end of August, but the effective date of your purchase is April the 1st. And why is that? It's a cutoff date. Everything that happened before that date is gone. If anybody shows up and they say they have a construction lien on the property, that they bought it on a land contract, that they are the owner of the property, whatever their situation might be, we have pieces of property we sell sometimes that used to have mortgages on them. We sent the bank their notice and it's just like shooting that mail into a big black hole. They don't know anything about it. They can't find it. They got too much stuff floating around their mail room. And after you've owned the piece of property a year, some appraiser shows up and says he's there to look at the property for the bank that owns it. Well, they don't own it anymore. If you have any kind of a situation pop up with somebody that says they have some kind of an interest in this property, it all comes back to that date right there. If it's before that date, it's toast, it's history, it's gone. There's a, there's a judgment on file at the courthouse, they can go get a copy. Everything after that date, you assume when you buy today. There are very few things that are going to be included on that list and most of them are addressed today. Taxes, all of the back taxes have already been voided for these properties. They're included in the minimum bid today. The compensation for the county for the back taxes you're paying today. The current taxes, we told you a little bit ago, you're paying the summer tax bill today. So the taxes are gonna be current when you leave here today. If you're buying something and it's got a homeowners association or if it's in a condominium, you are not liable for any HOA or condominium fees from any time before that date. They're gone too. Old utility bills from before that date are gone. Everything from before that date is history. Anything after that date, you inherit. Anything that we are aware of is included in today's minimum bid or being paid with that summer tax amount. You should, you should run into very few situations where anything new that's not in the minimum bid or the summer tax should show up. That could be condominium or homeowner association fees if those even apply to the property that you're buying. If you're buying something and it's got municipal water and sewer, even if it's turned off, sometimes they'll charge eight or ten dollars a month for the privilege of being hooked up. If they do, your liability begins on that date right there and not a day before. Here's a situation we run into not as much as we used to because we finally have most of them trained now. Doesn't mean they won't try collecting somebody else's old water bill from you. Here's how the story plays out. You buy something and it's connected to the village water system. You call down to City Hall to get it turned on and the clerk there says, well, you know, that last guy owed us an $800 water bill and he never paid it. Unless you pay us the $800, we're not gonna turn it on because that's our policy. They can't do that. The Attorney General's office says so. If you're buying something today and it doesn't have a well, it's on City Water, you're gonna wanna write down those four numbers on the top right-hand side of the screen. It's important that you do. It'll save you coming back to try to figure it out later on. That's a Michigan Attorney General opinion number. You can Google it on your phone right now. Look it up. Michigan Attorney General opinion 7258 says this. It says that somebody that buys a piece of property at a tax sale, that would be you, cannot be held liable for a former owner's water bill. And very importantly, they can't make you pay it or refuse you service. They cannot refuse to turn it on. Your liability for that water bill begins when? And not a day before. A municipal utility bill is treated like every other lien. If, it, if the city didn't want to come in and pay the taxes on that property, they lost their right to collect that bill. Collected from the last owner, they can't hold you hostage as the new owner of the property. The Attorney General says so. We already talked about possession. We're giving you possession today, subject to the right of anybody else that's there. 
for purposes of supervision maintenance and inspection but what if you buy something and there's already somebody in it we have nothing that we're selling in bay county today that has occupants but we've got maybe a couple in tuscola that do if you're buying a piece of property and there are lights on there are cars around you can see people moving it's obvious somebody is still there don't just charge up to the door and start barking at them it may not work out well many of the times the people still in the properties are friends or relatives or renters of the former owner they're pretty casual situations they probably know this property is being sold today not going to be any big wrinkles it could be a former owner generally they've come to acknowledge it as well I know we've got a couple of them here today trying to buy property back sometimes you might run into a situation and we've had some at this sale where people that lost a piece of property are not happy about it at all they could be unstable they could be emotionally all twisted up they could be armed you don't want to just go charging up to a door and make a confrontation where you can avoid it here's my advice if you buy something today and it's clearly occupied go find a neighbor there's going to be somebody in that neighborhood who knows who lives there what their name is maybe has a phone number for them knows perhaps an intermediary a friend or a relative of theirs that you can go through to make that first contact do it safe don't just go barging up to a door and start making demands it may not work out well every neighborhood has somebody in it who knows if who makes it their job to know everybody else's business Go find that person, ask them what's going on at that house, who lives there, how do I get in touch with them. Somebody in the neighborhood will know. Every neighborhood has a nosy Nancy. If you think your neighborhood doesn't, I'll bet it's you. <laughs> what you're buying today? I think we're selling that one today. Mm -hmm. Let's see, that's, uh, I think that's on my list out here in... Uh, $100. No, I think the minimum bid is higher than that. I think this one's out of Day Lake, isn't it? We may be selling that one later on. What you're buying today, we told you at the beginning of the sale that what we're representing that you're buying today is a piece of land. If you look in your book, there's a subdivision name, there's a legal description of the land. What you are buying today is that piece of land and whatever most of whatever is physically attached to it you are buying buildings you're buying driveways septic tanks water lines radio and tv towers you're buying swimming pools you're buying things of that nature you are not buying things that may be attached but belong to somebody else that is the guest room from that little house right there that we just showed you his mother-in-law called and wanted to stop by for a little period of time, maybe eight or ten years, and he said, I'm sorry, Mom, we don't have room. And she said, that's okay, I'll bring my own. She hooked it up to the back of the house pool, skirting around it, even covered the windshield so that she could sleep in late on Saturday morning after bingo. But if you look very closely, that still has a license plate on it. That belongs to Granny. It's attached to that house, but it's not owned by the person that lost the land. She can hop right in the driver's seat of that and put it in super low and step on the gas and get out of there in five seconds and you can't stop her because that is called personal property. It's owned by somebody other than the person that owned the land. We are not selling you today hot tubs, inventory, appliances, clothing, automobiles, RVs, anything of that nature. If it can be removed without the use of tools, if it has a title to it, it is not held by the person that owned the land, we don't own it we can't sell it to you we can't even give it to you if you buy a piece of property and you find something on it that is of value find that neighbor ask them who it probably belongs to who is their last how do i get in touch with them give them an opportunity to come and get their stuff if you buy something today you pull up in the garage and there's two brand new harley davidson's in there it is not christmas in august for you today they belong to somebody else let them come and get them so they don't haul you into court and make you uh, pay them compensation for its value. That includes any kind of a structure or living unit or other such thing that has ever had wheels under it, if it's ever had a separate title. If that unit is owned by somebody other than the landowner, 
if it's never been physically and legally attached to that land, it can be removed. We have seen modular homes on concrete block foundations tied to them, removed with the authorization of the court. If whoever owns that land did not own that unit, it was titled separately, and they were never noticed, there's not a judge on the planet that won't let them come and take it. If somebody shows up to try to remove something like a mobile home or a modular from something you buy today, make them show you an order from the judge to do so. Don't just let them wave a piece of paper around. Let the judge decide who something belongs to. But please keep in mind, we do not warrant the title to any unit, mobile, modular, or manufactured housing, anything that's ever had wheels under it, anything that's ever had a separate title. This also includes sometimes the Culligan Man's water softener. Just because it's attached to the property does not necessarily mean it's included in the sale. If somebody else can prove that they own it and they never had any kind of a notice, they're probably going to be allowed to take it. We're almost ready to get selling. It's like riding a teeter-totter when we sell. We're going to open up each piece at either the minimum bid listed in the sale book or a higher price if I already have one online. Then we're going to come into the room and I'm going to find two people that want to bid on it. It may be a little different for the first few pieces that have a lot of interest, but on the pieces that just have two or three people to hear, uh, here to bid on them, I'm going to find two people and we're going to go back and forth, just like riding that teeter-totter, until one of them slows down or wants off. Then I'll try to find somebody else to get on the teeter-totter and keep going. Once we're down to one person in the room, we'll come back and see if any of the people online, the live bidders watching the camera, want to keep on going. A couple of tips if you're brand new at this. First of all, don't leave your card on your chair when you get up to leave today. Somebody could pick it up and buy half of Tuscola County in your name. You don't want that to happen, because then we call you and ask you to pay for it. Turn it in where you got it. Treat it like a credit card. Take care of it in the meantime. Your cell phone, if you've got a cell phone with you, and just about everybody does, please put it on silent or vibrate. If you brought Granny with you today because you want to buy something, but Granny's the one with all the loot and she's got a hearing problem and you have to shout at her, take it out in the hallway. If you brought a child and it wants to get loud, it's past its feeding and nap time, please take that in the hallway as well. If your husband has the bitter card and he has just exceeded the authority you have given him and you need to have a discussion with him. Either A, take the card away from him, or B, go out in the hallway. We need to be able to communicate in here. We can't do that if there's 15 side conversations going on. If you make a mistake, you bid on the wrong piece, you bid misunderstood the price, you just won something, and all of a sudden you realize it's the wrong piece, stop me right then. Don't wait for the sale to be over. I can still sell it when that other bidder is here in the room. Be considerate of everybody else here. We will be considerate of you as well. And very importantly, when we say it's sold, it is. The price only goes one way at an auction, and that is up. You don't save money by waiting till the end. The other guy is going to bid what the other guy is going to bid. We can get there fast. We can get there slow. I'd rather not be here till 1130. I think everybody else in the room feels the same. When we say that it's sold, it is. I am not an auctioneer. We're not selling any cattle in here today. I am not going to do the yabba dabba do. I'm going to be pointing at the high bidder, repeating the bid price, and when it's time to sell it, I'm going to say going once, going twice, sold. When I say going once, if you intend to bid, you better have that card up in the air. Because once we say sold, it is. If I say going twice and I've not seen you and you're trying to bid, Shout at me, do whatever you need to do. Use the card, get it up in the air. Don't wink, don't nod, don't pull on your ear. We're not at Sotheby's. We don't have spotters in the audience. You need to get that card up. Once we say it's sold, it is, and we don't reopen the bidding. Anybody have any questions before we get going? Oh, okay. Not even you? You had lots of questions before. Oh, she's got questions, though. We will talk all about the backup bidder once we start selling. We do take backup bidder information. 
let me make a couple of notes on my stuff and then we'll get going here. Okay, we are going to get started. I've got seven pieces, seven pieces that are pretty popular, and we're going to sell those first so that most of you can get on out of here. I'll give you those numbers right now. If you're here to bid on the one piece of property and you got the hots for it, if I read your number right now, you're going to get out of here pretty quickly. The bad news is you have competition. Those numbers are in Bay County, number 850, 854, and 873. In Tuscola County, there are four of them. 6103, 6121, 6123, and 6130. Again, the numbers in Bay County are 850, 854, 873. In Tuscola, 6103, 6121, 6123, and 6130. If you buy something today, a there it is. My online bid is already at $5,300. My book tells me I have 12 bidders in this room that want to buy this one today. We have a little game we call the card game, and here's how it works. If you're willing to give me $5,400 for that house, you put your card in the air and you just keep it there and I'm going to start reciting numbers and when I recite a number that you won't pay, you take your card down. This saves us from going $100 at a time for the rest of the afternoon. If you'll give me $5,400, put your card in the air right now, there should be a lot more than that. $6,000, $7,000, $8,000, $9,000, $10,000. I'm going to start with the lady right here at $9,000. Who wants to give me $9,100? Anybody in the room? I've got more than that online. Anybody? Want, well, I've got $91 in the back. How about $95? We're going to jump the bit a little bit, get there quicker. How about $10,000? $10,500? $11,500? $11,500? $11,500 as low as I can go. I've got $11,000 right here. Anybody want to give me $11,250? Anybody anywhere? I've got $11,000 right here in the room going once. 11 and a quarter back there, 11 and a half, 11, 750, and now 12,000. 12 and a quarter, 12 and a half, 12, 750, and now 13,000. 13 and a quarter. I've got 13 with you. Anybody in the room at 13 and a quarter? I've got 13,000 going once. 13,000 going twice. You bought it. 13,174. And she's happy about it. My backup bidder in the back of the room. What's that number back there? Number 1021 is my backup bidder. The backup bidder information is collected in the event that the winning bidder cannot or will not pay. She's going out to her car to get her checkbook and she gets run over by a beer truck. It has happened before. If she could not or will not pay, we will contact the backup bidder and give them the opportunity to pay one bid increment below the final sale price. She just wanted for thirteen thousand. If she can't pay, it's offered to the backup bidder at twelve seven fifty. It is not negotiable. All right. Now we're going to number eight fifty four on the top of the next page. Franklin Street. Very good condition. Corner lot, Cape Cod. Sometimes we get inside other houses and as soon as we break the locks off and go in there to put our locks on it, we see three other locks sitting right on the floor and somebody else already been there. 
Those are called mortgage foreclosures. Sometimes the banks get them back, and like I said earlier, it's like shooting notice into a black hole when you send mail to a bank. Sometimes they won't even know for a year that they own the thing. But their loss, your gain. I'm at $6,100 with an online bidder already. I've got eight people in the room here today that said that they would give me about that amount of money for it. Let's play the card game again. If you give me $7,000 for that house, put your card in the air and keep it there, and we're going to start running the numbers. 8,000, 9, 10, 11,000, 12, 13, 14, 15,000. I'm going to start with the lady right here again at $15,000. Anybody in the room at 15 and a quarter? I've got 15,000 right there going once. 15,000 going twice. You bought it, 15,174. My backup bidder. Who wants to be the backup bidder? Who wants to be back up at 14 and, and 750? Anybody in the room want to be called if she gets run over by a beer truck? 190 and 260. I'll take them both. Now to number 873. It's the last one in the book. This property is actually owned by the Bay County Land Bank. It was foreclosed on in the prior year. They've gone through the process of the quiet title, which pretty much assures that you'll be getting title insurance for this with a lot less grief. The quiet title process is not yet complete, but it will be soon. It's already paid for, it's already been done. It's coming down the tracks. That being said, I've got two bids online for this one. I've got eight bidders here in the room for it. My minimum bid in that book is $5,500. I am already online at 25 and a quarter. Who would give me 25 five for this? Let's play the card game again. If we don't only get one or two, then we'll just bid it regular. 25 five. You want to give me 26? How about 26 and a half? 27? 20, I see a card, but I can't see 27. 27 and a half, 28 and a half, 29 and a half, 30 and a half, 31. I've got you on at 30 and a half. Who wants to give me 30,750? Anybody in the room? 30 and a half back there. I've got 30,750 online. 31 and a quarter. You want to give me 32? 32 and a quarter online. How about 33,000 and a quarter online? 34 in the room. 34 and a quarter online. 35,000 in the room. 35 and a quarter. 36 and a quarter. 36 and a half. 36,750. I'm at 36 and a half. 36,750 with a live bidder watching on that camera right there right now. $37,000 in the room. 37 and a quarter. 37,000 in the room, 37 and a quarter, 37 and a half. You're going to give me 38 and a half, 39 and a half, 40,000 and a half, 41 and a quarter, 41 and a half. I'm with you at 41,250 in the back. Your arm tired yet? It should be. I've got 41 and a quarter in the back row. Anybody in the room at 41 and a half? 41 and a quarter, now 41 and a half right next to you. How about 42 and a half, 43 and a half, 44 and a half, 45 and a half, 46 and a half, 47 and a half, 48 and a half, don't look at him, look at me, 49 and a half, $50,000, 50 and a half, 51 and a half, 52, 51,750. I've got him on at 51, 51, 750, and now 52 and a quarter, 52 and a half, 52, 750, and now 53 and a quarter, 53 and a quarter, don't let him do you like that, 53 and a quarter, it's only money, 53 and a quarter, 53 and a half, 53, 750, and now 54 and a quarter, 54 and a half, 54 and a half. 54,750 and now 55,000. 55 and a quarter. 55 and a quarter. I've got him on at 55. 
55,000 going once, going twice. You bought it, 55,107. My backup bidder, what's your number? Backup bidder? Backup bidder. What's his number back there? Number 892. Don't let him leave. He's got money left. I'll make him buy something else. <laughs> Once you let me know that you got 50 grand set in your pocket, I'm going to be watching you. Okay, now in Tuscola County, we're going to sell four of them. 6103. There is a former owner of the property here. He claims he has separate title to the mobile home and that he will remove it after the sale if he doesn't win it. So that being said, remember what we told you. You might want to make him show you authorization of the court to do so, but that's between you and him. 6103, I've got two bids for it online and 12 people in the room here to bid on this one today. The former owner is here. I've got thirty. I've got sixty-eight hundred dollars already online. Let's try that card game. Considering we got twelve people here, who wants to give me seven thousand for it? Just one. Seven thousand there. Who wants to give me seventy-five hundred? Seventy-five. Going to give me eight thousand. Eighty-five. Nine. Ninety-five. Ten thousand. Ten and a half. Eleven and a half, 12 and a half, 13,000, 13,500, 14,000, 14,500, 15,000, 15,500, 16,000, 16,500, 16 and a quarter. I've got 16,000 over there. Anybody else here at 16,250? Anybody want in this one at 16,250? 16,000 going once twice, 16,121. My backup bidder right here, what's the number? 278. You'll want to make some contact with the, the former owner. He's here so he knows that this is going on. Next, 6121. 6121 is on Kane. Kane Road out Way. It's an acre in size, one story. They left you a lot of goodies inside. And it's summer, the end of it. It's going to be a little stinky. One piece of advice. I've been doing this an awful long time. I've been in many, many, many of these properties. Whatever you do, when you go into one, do not open the refrigerator. <laughs> there is nothing in there that is worth that experience. <laughs> Take my advice on that, please. 6121. I've already got $3,800 bid online. I've got eight people in the room that want to bid on this one. Who will give me $4,000 for it? Put your card in the air and keep it there. Seventeen. You still in? Seventeen. Eighteen thousand. Nineteen. Twenty thousand dollars. Now you want to start me at nineteen? Nineteen. Nineteen. You want to give me nineteen and a quarter? Nineteen and a half. Nineteen seven fifty. I've got nineteen and a half right down front. Anybody in the room at nineteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars? Nineteen five going once. Twice. 
19 5 down front, 656. My backup bidder in the back. What's the number back there? Number 872. Now down to 61.23. Maybe the most popular piece of the day. 61.23, Lakefront Home. Lots of personal property here. We told you about stuff that isn't included in the sale. There's some here you're gonna to wanna to find out whoever was there, give them an opportunity to come back and get it. I am already at just shy of $10,000. Let's play that card game. I've got 16 bidders in the room here for this one today. If you'll give me $12,000, put your card in the air and keep it there. 12,000, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30,000 dollars, 31, 32. I'm going to start with you at 32,000. Anybody in the room want to give me 32, 250, 32, five. How about 33 and a half, 34 and a half, 35 and a half, 36 and a half, 37 and a half, 38 and a half. 39 and a half, $40,000, now 40 and a half, and 41, 41 and a half, 42, you want to go to 43, 44, 45, 45, 45, 45 and a quarter, 45, five, 45, seven, 50, and now 46,000, 46 a quarter, 46 and a half, I'm at 46 and a quarter over there. Anybody in the room want to give me 46 and a half? 46 and a quarter over there going once. What about our friends online? They've been sleeping all day so far. I'm at 46 and a quarter, I think, or nope, I'm at 46,000 over there. Anybody want to give me 46 and a quarter? 46,000 going once. Twice, oh, he's back. They had the family conversation. 46 and a half, 46,750. 46, 750, 40, 7,000, 47 and a quarter. You know you want it. Yes, he does. I've got 47 over there. Anybody in the room want to give me 47 and a quarter? Why don't some of you guys loan him some money? He'll keep going. I've got 47 over there going once. 47 going twice. Sold it, $47,000. Two, number 900. My backup bidder. What's your number there? 577. Now we're going to sell one more and then we're going to go back to the beginning of the book, sell them in order. I'll probably take a peek and see if there's anything else that looks like it really has a bunch of people waiting on it. But we're going to go to number 6130. But that should allow a bunch of you to get on out of here and head on down the road. 6130 on Almer Street in Cairo. Smaller home. Decent condition. Lots of stuff left there for you to sort out and dispose of. 6130. I'm already at $5,500 online. If you'll give me $6,000, put your card in the air. $7,000. 8000 9 10,000, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15,000 dollars, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20,000 dollars. I'm going to start over there at 20,000. Who wants to give me 20 and a quarter? Anybody, anywhere? 20,000 dollars going, oh, 20 and a quarter behind you. 20 and a half. How about 21 and a half? 22 and a half. 23 and a half. 23 and a quarter. I got 23,000 standing up over there by the door. You gonna give me 23 and a quarter? Anybody in the room at 23 and a quarter? 23 and a quarter online. 23 and a half? I'm at 23 and a quarter with an online bidder. Anybody in the room at 23, five? 23 and a quarter online going once, twice, 
sold it online for twenty-three to fifty. My backup bidder is number nine hundred. Nine hundred. Let me take a quick peek and see if there's anything else in here that's got a lot of traffic. We'd rather take your money and send you home now. Fewer people breathing means the room's a little cooler. I think I'm going to sell three other ones before we go back to the beginning. Well, actually, maybe not. Let's just let's just go through the book. Is anybody? Anybody in the room want to give me $214,000 for bundle number 800? Anybody anywhere? I didn't think so. We'll go right on by that one. <laughs> Just a few million dollars worth of demolition to do. Funny how nobody shows up for those. Number uh, 801, 801 on Pine Road. I've got a couple of online bids for it. If we've got online bids, nobody in the room wants them real bad. We're going to roll through them pretty quick. Number 801, I'm already at $5,300. Anybody in the room want to give me $54? $5,300 going once. I've got 54 there, now 55 over here, and 56. Now 57, 58, 59, 6,000. 6,100, now 62 and 63. 64, 6,500. You want to give me 7,000? How about 7,500? What about 8,000? 8,500. 9,000, 8,600 is as low as I can go. I'm at 85 with you. Anybody in the room want to give me 8,600? 85 going once. 86 online. 87, 88, 89. I've got 8,800 with the lady right there. What about online? 89? 88 in the room. 88 going once. Twice. 8,800 number, 710. My backup bidder over here, what's his number? Number 190. Number 803 on Coggins Road. It's a filthy, stinky mess. It says right so there in the book. <laughs> We're never going to second guess one like that there, are we? Truth in advertising. Ain't nobody going to get there and say, you didn't tell me it was a filthy, stinking mess. No, we did. I'm at $5,600 with an online bidder. Who wants a filthy sink and mess for $5,700? Anybody in the room? Going once, going twice. They can't smell it online. I got $5,700 right there, now 58 online. How about 5,900? 59 in the room. Anybody here at $6,000? I've got $5,900 going once, twice. You just bought a filthy sink and mess, number 390. <laughs> $5,900, 390 the backup bidder is online. Enjoy. And Bay County thanks you for buying that piece of property today. Number 804, Erickson Road, Pin Coming Way. Used to be a garage in its first life, now it's a man cave. I'm not sure what the difference is except for that direct TV dish right on the top there so they don't miss the football games when they're not home mowing the lawn. No plumbing, no heating, just stuff. $7,000, I've already got bid online. Anybody in the room want to give me 71? Anybody here for this one? 71 right there. Anybody in the room want to give me 72 and ride the teeter-totter right now? I've got 7,200 online. I already know how high they'll go. You want to give me 8,000? 8,100. How about 9,000? 9,100. How about 10? They can only go up one increment at a, at a time online. Ten and a quarter. How about eleven thousand? Eleven and a quarter. Twelve thousand. Twelve and a quarter. Thirteen thousand. Twelve and a half. Twelve and a half. Twelve seven fifty. And now thirteen thousand. I've got twelve seven fifty with an online bidder. Anybody in the room at thirteen thousand? 
12, 7, 50 going once, twice. Sold that one online for 12, 7, 50. My backup bidder right here in the room is 10, 71. Yeah, I had a moment like that earlier today. 806, is anybody in the room here to bid on 806? It's not circled. If you don't want it, we're not gonna sell it to you. Anybody here for 806? Then let's get by that one and go to 807. Number 807, Center Road, Essexville. Nice big piece of land, old garage here. It's, pre well, I wouldn't even call that a garage. I'd call it garage walls. $2,200 I've already got bid online. Who wants to give me 2300 Anybody in the room for that one? 22 going once, twice. Sold it online, $2,200. Number 808, Callahan Road, Munger. A lot of deferred maintenance. Needs a new roof like yesterday or maybe three weeks before yesterday. $3,800, I've got bid online. I've got several people in the room that wanted this one opened up. Who wants to give me $4,000 for it? I've got $4,000 right there. Anybody in the room want to give me forty-five? dollars Who wants to give me $4,100? i have got forty-one dollars right there. $42,000, dollars $44,000, dollars dollars You want to give me $5,000? $46,000, we'll do it the slow, painful way. I've got $4,500 with you. Anybody in the room at $46,000, dollars 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 $5,000, $51,000, $52,000, $53,000, $54,000. 55. I've got 54 over there in the back row. Anybody in the room at 5,500? 54 going, 55, he's back. Now 56, 57, 57, now 5,800, 59, 59, I got 58. Oh, you didn't hear about the big gold strike they had Munger last week? I got 58 back there. I need 59. 59. It works every time. Now 6,000. Then 6,100. 61. It's now 6,200. 63. 6,400. 65. 66. 67. 67. I've got 6,600 over there with that gentleman. I need 67 from you. What about online? 67? 66 in the back row over there, going once. 60, 67. 68. Now 6,900. Now 7,000. 7,100. 72. 73. 74. 7,500. You guys are thinking too much. 75, you just keep on bidding. Sooner or later, you will win. Works every time, guaranteed. 75, I got 74 over there on that side going once. Going twice. Oh, now you show up. 75 back there, now 76. 76, I, 76, 7,700. Now 78. 78, 79. $79, $8,000. I've got 79 back here. 79 going once, twice. 7,900, what's the better number? 797. 7,500, 797. 7, My backup bidder in the back row over there is number 107. The next three on that page, I don't have circles around them. That doesn't mean that we're not going to sell them. It means we haven't really offered them to you yet, but we're not going to if you don't want them. Anybody in the room to bid on 811? Anybody here for that one? Well, what about 812? 813. Anybody here for 813? Flip the page onto the next one. I don't have circles around the first two. 816. Anybody here for 816? Go on on Henry. 
What about eight? Eighteen. All righty then. I've got a circle in my book around number 820. We're going to open that one up next. 820 on South Erie. Cape Cod. It's got some charm to it. Full basement. Roof is not terribly old. Not a bad place. I need $17,000 for it. Where's my better $17,000? Somebody wanted it circled. Where are they? I'm going to call your mom if I find out. I guess they don't want it. 827, I've got four bids for this in the room and an online bid to open me up at $11,000. Number 827 on Farragut. Newer siding, newer windows. Won't take too much to make this one move in ready. I've got 11000 online. Who wants to give me 11 and a quarter? 11 and a quarter. Who wants to give me 11 and a half? Anybody in the room at 11 and a half? I've got it online. 11,750. And now 12. 12 and a quarter. 12 and a quarter right there. Anybody in the room at $12,500? 12 and a half. Then I'll give me 13 and a half. 14, 13, 750. 13, I've got you on at 13 and a half right there. Anybody in the room at 13, 750? 13 and a half going once. 13, 750 in the back. Now 14 and a quarter. 14 and a quarter, 14 and a half. 14, come on, money bags. I know you got it. 14 and a half, 14, 750. And now 15,000. 14,750 way in the back of the room. Anybody want to give me 15,000? 14,750 going once, twice. You bought it. 14,750, 1021. 21. My backup bidder is number. What's his number there? Backup bidder, number 600. Number 831 on Woodside, Woodside Lane. Good bones. It's kind of grubby. You can clean it up, fix it up, and look at that. It's small. It is efficient. You can heat that one with the flashlight. <laughs> I've got a $5,100 bid. Two bids online, about a half dozen people in the room here for it today. Who wants to give me $5,200 for it? Anybody in the room at $5,200? I've got $51 online. $5,100. 52 right there. Anybody in the room at 53? Let's get that teeter-totter rocking. 53. Now, now I see cards all over the room. Let's play the card game again and get this done with quickly. Who wants to give me $6,000 for it? There are people here that want to buy it. We might as well just get there. 7000 8000 I'm going to start right there at $8,000. Who wants to give me 81 Anybody in the room at 8100 8000 going once. 81 82 82, now 83. 83, 83 way in the back. I've got 82 right there in the middle of the room. Anybody want to give me 83? 82 going once. 83 in the back, now 84. 84, now 8,500. 86. 87. 88. 89. 9,000. 91. 92. 93. 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 10,000. 10 and a half, 10 and a quarter. We'll do it this little painful way. I've got you on it right there in the middle of the room at 10,000. Anybody want to give me 10, 250? 10,000 going once, twice. 10,000, what's the better number? 10,000, number 645. Back up bidder, I think is 1021. Number 836 is on Adams Street. Newer mechanicals, some updating obvious. 1920s, one and a half story home. I am already at $6,400 with an online bidder. About a half dozen bidders in the room here for this one as well. Who wants to bump me up to $7,000 on it? 
I've got 7,000 back there. Who wants to give me 7,500? How about 8,000? 8,500, now 9,000. 9,500? 91. 92. I've got 90, 92. 9,300. 94. I've got 93 with you. 94. 95. 96. 9,700. 98. 9,900. 99, now 10,000, new bid increment, 10 and a quarter, 10 and a half, 10,750, 11,000. I've got 10,750, 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half, 11,750, and now 12,000, 12 and a quarter, 12 and a quarter, 12 and a half, 12,750, and now 13,000, 13 and a quarter. 13 and a half, 13,750, $14,000, 14 and a quarter, 14 and a quarter, I've got 14,000 with you, going once, twice, 14 and a quarter now in the back, now 14, five, 14,750, and 15,000, 15 and a quarter, 15 and a half, I've got 15 and a half, 15, 750, and now 16,000, 16 and a quarter, 16 and a quarter, 16 and a half, 16, 750, I've got 16 and a half right in the middle of the room, anybody at 16, 750, 16 and a half going once, twice, you bought it, 16, five, number 600. Back of bidders, 10, 21. Anybody here today to bid on 844? If not, we'll skip it. Anything that we go by, if you decide, if you're here and you're, you're looking at something and you don't get it, and you got money left and you're not ready to take it home, you come up afterward, whatever we didn't sell, we will reopen at those minimum bids if you're interested in them. If you can't pick one out, you can't make up your mind, you just, I'll help you. I'll sell you a whole bunch of them. Okay, we already sold 850. 851. Looks like we have some bidders in the room for 851 on Fitzhugh Street. Needs a little cleaning up. Scrape her down, spray her down, put her back together. 851. I have already got an online bid of $4,200. Who wants to give me 43? Anybody in the room at 40, 300, yep. 43 with a live online bidder. We'll see if it goes anywhere else. Anybody in the room want to get me 40, 400, 40, and they're online. I've been advanced bidder, two live bidders online. We'll let them ride the teeter-totter for a second. When they're done, we'll let you know what the price is. If you want back in, you can get back in. If you want to jump the bid right now by shouting out $80,000, I will gladly take that bid. It's a little slow and the online bidders are the only one going because they're going up a hundred dollars at a time. If it ends up at $250,000, we will need some food brought in. Often compared to watching paint dry. It's at $5,200 and it's still moving. Usually we'll sit here for about 10 minutes and watch that tick up $100 at a time and I'll get ready to sell it and somebody in the back of the room will start bidding. They could have saved us 15 minutes. It's at $5,600 online. They've slowed down to a crawl. Anybody in the room want to give me $5,700? 56 going once, twice. There she is, 57, now 58, happens every time. 58 online, 57 in the room, 58 online, now 59, $6,000. 59 in the room, 6,000 online, now 61. 61, now 62. 63, 
sixty four anybody else in the room want to get on the teeter totter we can make this go faster sixty four sixty three in the room sixty four on line sixty five hundred now sixty six sixty seven sixty eight sixty nine seven thousand now seventy one you're still in seventy one I'm at seven thousand dollars online anybody in the room at seventy one hundred seven thousand online going once seventy one way in the back this teeter totter needs some grease I need seventy two from the online bidder seventy three now seventy four seventy five now seventy six seventy five seventy six seventy seven hundred now 78, yep. 79, and now $8,000, yep. 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 8,900, now 9,000. 10,000, thank you very much. Now I need 10 and a quarter. Let's see if they'll still keep going online. 10 in the back of the room, jump the bid. 10,000 going once, twice. You bought it, see all the time we save. 10,000, number 1021. Backup bidder is online. A little warm in here. Is that it? Yeah, but you guys are all breathing. At least most of you are. I think there are a couple out there that could have fallen off. On the next page, 854 has already been sold. 855 is where we're going next. It's on Monroe Street. I've got somebody in the room that said they'd give me 10 and a quarter for the one at 401 South Monroe. 855, where's my better at 10 and a quarter? Where are they? So right there I got it. Who wants to give me ten and a half? Anybody? Ten and a half. Ten seven fifty. I've got ten and a half right down in the front. Anybody at ten seven fifty? Ten and a half going once. Twice. Ten seven fifty in the back. Now eleven and a quarter. Eleven and a quarter in the back. Eleven and a half. Eleven and a half. I've got eleven and a quarter in the back. Anybody at eleven and a half? Ten and a quarter going once. Twice. Ten and a half. Ten seven fifty. Ten seven fifty in the back. Now eleven thousand. Eleven a quarter. Eleven and a half. I've got eleven two fifty in the back. Anybody at eleven five? Eleven two fifty going once. Twice. Eleven two fifty ten twenty one. My backup bidder down front is 402. <laughs> Anybody here for 856? Also on Monroe. Same side of the street, same block, same everything, just about. Anybody here for that one? 858? Or excuse me, 856? What about 858 on Farragut? Let's open that one up. <coughs> Number 858, number uh, 409, South Farragut. Nine foot ceilings, nice lot. It needs some work, but it's got potential and good bones. I need $8,000, I've got it right there. Anybody want to give me $8,100? $8,000 going once, twice, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. I've got 8700 dollars with you. Anybody in the room at 88? 87 going once. Twice. You bought it. 8700 dollars What's the better number? 8700 1071. My backup bidder for when his wife finds out is number 816. Anybody with a blue bid card? 
You're looking around the room, the guy sitting next to you has got a blue bid card. What makes him special? Blue bid cards are from the people that got here after we gave some of our opening instructions. Want to make sure that they're aware that we cannot sell the people that have delinquent taxes. So if you got a blue bid card, uh, I may ask you when you bid, if we're not familiar with you, whether or not you're aware of that, ask you just kind of verify that you don't. If you have delinquent taxes in Bayer Tuscola counties, we can't sell your property today. Number 864 is on South Jefferson. I've got three bids online and five bidders here in the room for this one here today. Looks pretty good. Beautiful. 2020 South Jefferson. I've already got 15.5 bid online. Anybody that want to give me 15.750, I've got it right there. Anybody in the room at $16,000? 16 and a half. 17 and a half. 16, 17 and a quarter. That's as low as I can go. I bet you at 17,000. 17 and a quarter. 17 and a half. 17,750. And now 18,000. 18 and a quarter. 18 and a half. 18,5. I've got 18 and a quarter up front. 18 and a quarter. 18. And a half, 18,750, and now 19 and a quarter, 19 and a half, 19,750, 20,000 dollars, 20 and a quarter, 20 and a half, 20,750, and now 21 and a quarter, 21 and a half, 21,750, and now 22 and a quarter, 22 and a half, 22,750, and now 23 and a quarter, 23 and a half, 23,750. 23,750, 24,000, 24 and a quarter. I've got 24,000 there. Anybody in the room at 24,250? 24,000 going once. 24 and a quarter online. 24,500, 24,750. 25,000, 25 and a quarter. 25 and a half, 25,750. 26,000, 26 and a quarter. 26 and a half, 26,750. 26 and a half going once, twice, 26,750 and now 27,000, 27 and a quarter, 27,5, 27,750, now 28,000, 28 and a quarter, 28 and a half, 28,750, 29,000, 29 and a quarter, 29 and a half, 29,750, 30,000, 30 and a quarter, 30 and a half, 30,750, and now 31, 31 and a quarter, 31 and a half, 31,750, 32,000, 32 and a quarter, 32,5, 32,750, and now 33. 33 and a quarter. 35,000. 35, 35 and a quarter. 35 and a half. 35,750. 36. And a quarter. 36 and a half. 36,750. I've got 36 and a half way in the back. I need 36, 36, 750. And now 37 and a quarter. 37 and a quarter. 37 and a half. 37, 750. 38. 38 and a quarter. 38 and a quarter. I've got 38,000 in the back of the room. Anybody at 38, 250? 38,000 going once. 38 and a quarter, he's back in now. 38,5. I'm with you at 38 and a quarter. Anybody in the room at 38,5? 38, 38 and a quarter going once. Twice. 38 and a quarter, number 600. Backup bidder is 10, 21. Number 867, South Monroe, 
2300 they had more time to pay they did not get it done 2300 South Monroe $6,800 is where I'm already at online they have moved out they're gone anybody want to give me 7,000 anybody in the room I've got 7,000 right there and 7100 right in front of you 72 73 74 75 you want to give me 8,000 8,000 how about 85 9,000 95 10 10 and a half 11 11 11 behind 11 and a quarter 11 and a half 11 750 and now 12 12 and a quarter 12 and a half 12 750 13,000 13 and a quarter 13 and a half 13 750 and now 14,000 14 and a quarter 14 and a half 14 750 and now 15,000 15 and a quarter 15 and a half 15750 it's only money I've got 155 with you anybody in the room at 15750 15 and a half going once 15750 online now 16,000 16 and a quarter 16 and a half 16 and a half 16750 16 and a half 16750 and now 17,000 17 and a quarter. 17,000 in the room right there. I need 17 and a quarter. Going once, twice. 17,000, 1071. My backup bidder on that one is online. Anybody in the room for number 868? What about 869? I've got a circle in my book around number 870. We're going to sell it because I've already got it bid online. Third Street, we're out in Pinconning now, getting toward the end of the Bay County list. Third Street, Pinconning, good location. Lots of storage for you to put all that stuff in after you take all theirs out. Going to need a roof. Remember, inventory and stuff like that is not included if you find anything in there. $8,500, I've already got bid online. Who wants to give me 86? Anybody in the room at 8,600? You can open your own cheese shop right there. <laughs> Taco stand, whippy dip, whatever you want to put in there. I'm at $8,600 with an online bidder. Anybody, let's see how far they're gonna go. I've got one advanced bid, one live bidder watching on that camera right now. They're going to do the tango and see what we end up with. 9,500 is where I'm at. Anybody? They're still going. 9,600. Anybody in the room at $9,700? Going once, twice. $9,600 online. Backup bidder is also online. Number 871, also Pin Cunning. I heard that everybody that lives in Pin Cunning is pretty sharp. Oh, make him stop. Jennings Street, Pin Cunning. Custom Kitchen. That could be a loaded statement right there. Many of these houses do come with appliances. There's a refrigerator in the front yard and a stove out back. Jennings Street, I'm already at $10,500 online. Look at that, it's already 11, and 11 and a quarter, and 11 and five. Who wants to give me 13,000 in the room for this one? We're gonna get there, I've got 13 right there. Anybody in the room at 13 and a quarter? We'll go back and watch you fight the people online. Look at that, it's at 14 and a half online, 15. They're just going nuts up there. I'm just gonna let them bid for a second. When they're done, I'll let you back in. If you want, back in. It's at 17,000 and going up just as fast as I can read them. 18,000. Three online bidders clicking that button at home like they're going to go to purgatory if they don't. It's at 18,750. 19,000.
$20,000. And still moving. This is all live bidding. Our advanced bids online have already been well surpassed. 20,000 and a quarter with an online bidder. Anybody in the room want to give me 20 and a half? Anybody anywhere? Anybody at 20, 20 and a half right there? Now I need 20,750. 21 and a quarter. 21,000 in the room. Going once, twice. It belongs to you. Twenty-one thousand ten ninety-three. Back up bidder is online. On the next page, we already sold the last one on that page, so let's sell eight seventy-two. A reminder again, if you buy anything in Bay County, they've got keys for the locks. Please don't cut them off. Let them come out and take them off first. There should be no occupants in anything in Bay County. Everybody that we know about has already moved. 872 Linwood on Benjamin Street. It was occupied when we were out there, so we couldn't get a good look at the inside, but you can see the outside looks well maintained. $8,300 is where I need to be. Where's my bidder at $8,300? I, my list says I have four. Where are they? 83. Who wants to give me $8,400? I've got 83 right down front going once. 83 going twice. I guess they all went home. It belongs to you. Uh-oh. She's crying. Or laughing, or both. What's the better number? Four, 48. She came here today with you fully expecting you'd be outbid and she'd go home with all the money, didn't she? Well, it's your birthday too. What a birthday present. Here, something to help me clean. Merry Christmas. We already sold 873. Let's go to Tuscola County. We already sold a few of these. We're going to sell some more. Tuscola County, number 6100. First one in the book. Have fun with that out there, will you? Make him do all the hard work. It's his fault. Remind him of that. Remind him for the rest of his life that he bought that house. 6100 is where we're at. I'm already at $2,300. Vacant land. It's a, plat a platted lot in Sunset Bay number one. I'm at uh, $2,600 already online. Anybody in the room want to give me 27? 27 right there. Now I need 2,800. Anybody in the room at 28? What about online? 29. Now 3,000. 3,100. 3,200. 3,300, now 34. 3,500, now 36. 3,500 in the room. 36 online. 3,700, now 38. 39. 4,000. 4,100, now 42. 43. I've got 42 online. Anybody in the room at 4,300? 42 going once. 43, he's back in, now 4,400. 4,500, now 46. 47, he said he's all done. 4,600 online, going once, twice. $4,600 online. My backup bidder is 194. Number 6101, Remington Road. A little bit over an acre in size. Remington and Deckerville. There's a small shed there. That would be a great place for your mother-in-law. <laughs> By that far, she'll never, ever come back again. $7,100 is what I'm looking for on it. Who wants to give me $7,100 for that piece? 
Anybody in the room today? I've got 7,100 right. This guy's been right. He was like here at like four o'clock this morning. Anybody want to give me 60 or anybody want to give me 72? 7,100 going once, twice. That's all you. What's the bidder number? 743 at the minimum bid. Sixty-one oh two on Carroll Road. I've got six bidders in the room for this one here today. According to the neighbor, it's full of cockroaches. No extra charge. Fifty-two hundred dollars. Maybe you can find a use for them. Maybe you can train them to clean. I've already got sixty-three hundred dollars. Well, fifty-three hundred dollars for the non-line bidder. Anybody in the room want to give me fifty-four? $5,400 right there. Anybody want to give me 55? 55, no, 56, 57, 58, 59, and $6,000. How about 65? You want to give me 7,000? 7,000. How about 75? $10,000 for that cockroach farm. How about 10 and a half? 10 and a half? 10 and a half. 11. 10, 7, 50. I got 10 and a half right behind you. 10, 7, 50. Everybody needs some cockroaches in their real estate portfolio. It's a well-rounded portfolio. You hear them preach about that. 10, 7, 50 online. 11, 11 and a quarter. I've got 11,000 right there. Anybody want to give me 11, 250? Look, we just, we're going to have to start importing cockroaches. Now 11 and a half. 11, 7, 50. And now 12. 12 and a quarter. 12 and a half. 12, 7, 50. 13 and a quarter. 13 and a half, 13, 7, 50, 14,000, 14 and a quarter, 14 and a half. You're going to give me 15, 15 and a half, 16 and a half, 17 and a half, 18 and a half, 19 and a half, 20,000, 20 and a quarter, 20 and a half, 20,750, 21 and a quarter, 21 and a half, 21,750. 22, I'm going to give me 22 and a half, 23 and a half, 24 and a half, 24 and a half, 24, 750, 25,000. I got 24, 750 back there. Anybody in the room at 25,000? 24, 750 going once, twice. 24,750, 763. 6103. 6104 has some bidders in the room here for it, two or three to be specific. The Oak Grove Sub, one story home in Clio, at least the mailing address is Clio. Mobile home with additions, lots of debris. A little mold thrown in there just for good mix. Who wants to give me $3,000 for that one? There's almost that, that, almost that much there in aluminum. Who wants to give me three? I got three thousand right there. Anybody want to give me thirty-one hundred? Three thousand. Go thirty-one. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-four hundred. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. And now four thousand dollars. Forty-one. Forty-two. Forty-three. Forty-four hundred. I've got forty-three back there with you. Anybody in the room at forty-four hundred? Forty-three going once. Twice, 4,300, 872. Backup bidder, 136. Number 6105, Silverwood Way. We're in the Shea Lake Resort area now. 
6105. Who wants to give me $600 for that one? It's circled in my book. Who wants to give me $600 for 6105? I guess they left or the aliens captured them. The last three on that page are not circled in my book. Is anybody here for 6106? 6107. 6108. On the next page, is anybody here for 6109? I've got a circle around 6110. Are they here? Yes. 6110. Let's open that one up. 6110. Edmund Place. I need $1,300 for it. I've got it right there. $1,300. And it's, a, it's a canal front. You can get out to the lake from there. I need 61, or excuse me, I need $1,400. I've got 13 right there. 13 going once, twice. You bought it, $1,300, what's the better number? 656. 6 at the minimum bid. Is anybody here for 6111? 6112. 6113. 6114. I've got 6115 circled. Do I have a bidder in the room for 6115? Somebody requested it. If we go right there, let's open that one up. If we go buy things, we will open them back up again after we've been through the book one time at or above the minimum price. Nothing below. 6115, I need $950. I've got it right there with the lady. Anybody want to give me a thousand dollar bill? 950 going once, twice. It's yours. What's the better number? Number 893. Number 6116. I have four people indicating an interest in that one. Let's open it up. It's a mobile home with the garage out near Mayville. Occupied as last we knew. $2,200. Where's my bidders for that one? 22 right here. Anybody in the room want to give me two? I got 23 back there. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 3,000 dollars. You want to give me 3,500? How about 4,000? What about 4,500? 5,000? 5,500? 6,000? 5,600? 56, 57, 58. I've got 5,700 dollars in the back corner. 58 over there in the doorway, 59, now 6,000. You want to give me 65? 61, 62, 63. I've got $6,200 over there in the doorway standing up. Anybody want to give me 6,300? 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, and $7,000. 71, 72, 73. 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. I've got $7,800 over there. Anybody in the room at 79? 78 going once. 78 going twice. 79 online. 8,000. 8,100. 8,000 in the room right there going once. 81, 82, 83. 84, 85, $8,400, 85 online, now 86, 8,700, 88, 89, 9,000, 9,100, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 10,000 dollars, 10 a quarter, 10,000 in the room right back there, 10,000 going once, twice, 10,000 dollars, 763. Backup bidder is online.
Anybody in the room for 6117? Let's open it up. Mertz Road, Fred Neffel's neighborhood. Vacant property. There it is. I need $1,300 for it. I've got it right there. Anybody in the room want to give me 14? 13 going once, twice. That one belongs to you. What's the bidder number? Number 571 at the minimum bid. Number 6118, Severance Road. It's a little over an acre in size, wooded property, just outside of Cass City. $650. Right there, I've got it. Anybody want to give me $700? Seven, $750. Now eight, eight fifty, and nine hundred. Nine and a half, a thousand dollars. Nine and a half with you going once. A thousand. Now eleven hundred and twelve. I've got eleven hundred dollars going once. Twelve online. Thirteen. Now fourteen hundred. Fifteen. Now sixteen hundred. 17, now 1,800, 19, and 2,000, 21, 2,200, 23, 2,400, 25, 2,600, 27, 2,800, 27 in the room, going once, twice, 2,700, 144. Back up bidder is online. Number 6119, Saginaw Road, out Vassar Way. Localized roof leaks. Lots of stuff from the former owner still there. You're going to want to go back and try to contact them and see if they want to come and get any of it. Out an M138, I've got $2,600 already online. Anybody in the room want to bump me up to $3,000? I've got $3,000 back there. Anybody here want to give me $31? 31. 31. 32, 33, 34, 35, uh, 35, now 36, and 3,700. 36 back there. 36 going once. 37, 38, 39, 4,000, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. You want to give me 5,000? How about 5,500? What about 6,000? 6,500? 61. I've got 6,000 with you. Anybody in the room at 61, 62, 63, 62 in the room, 63 online, 64, 6,500, 66, now 67, 68, now 69, 6,800 in the room, going once, 69, now $7,000, 7,100, 72, 73, 74, now 75. Yep. 76, now 77. 76 going once, twice. 7,600, what's the better number? 7,600, 674. Is that 764 or 674? 674, I'm getting dyslexic. Backup bidder is online. On the next page, number 61 and 20 on Saginaw Road. There are indicators that there, should, there could be some stuff dumped out there. You're going to want to make sure you're up to speed on that. I need $2,800 for it. Where is my better $2,800? Anybody in the room here for that one? Three people circle. I got it right there. Anybody want to give me $29? $29. $3,000. $3,100. 32. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 4,000. You want to give me 4,500? 41. I've got 4,000 right there. Anybody at $4,100? 4,000, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. I've got $4,800 with you. Anybody at 49, 48 going once, yep. 49 online now, $5,000, 5,000, 
five, now 51. 52. 53. 5,400, now 55. 54 going once, 55 online, now 56. 57. 56 going once, twice. You bought it, 5,600, what's the better number? 5,600, 10, 59. 5,600, 10, 59. Backup bidder is online. We already sold 6121. 6122 on Goodrich Road, Fostoria Way. Vacant parcel. Well, I guess there is a structure out there. Partially sited, open to the elements. Natural air conditioning. I've got $1,800 already online. Who wants to give me 19? All over the room. Let's play the card game one more time. Give me 2,000. Who wants to give me 2,500? 3,000, 3,500, 4,000, 4,500, $5,000. I'm going to start right there at 5,000. Who wants to give me 50, $100? 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Then I give me 6,000. How about 6,500? 61. We'll do it this whole painful way. 61, 62, 63, 64. Now 65, five seconds of my life, I'll never get back. 6,600, 67, 68, 69, and now 7,000, 7,100. I've got seven, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. I've got 7,400 with you. Anybody at $7,500? 74 going once, twice. You bought it, 7,400. What's the better number? 7,400, 10, 22. My backup bidder's already gone. He was out the door the second he was done. We already sold 6123. 6124 in the village of Fostoria. Do I have a bidder here for 6124? It's circled in my book. I've got it right there to open it up at $1,200. I've got 1,200 over there on number 6124. Anybody in the room at 1,300? 12 going once. 12 going twice. You bought that one, $1,200. Number 690. 690. Number 6125, the Bay City Forestville Road. I've got a circle around that one. Are they still here? Let's open that one up. 61, 25, 30, 400 dollars. I've got it there. Who wants to give me 35? Now 36, 37, 38, 39, 4,000. You want to give me 45? 41. I've got 4,000 right there with you. Anybody in the room at 4,100? 4,000 going once, twice. 4,000, number 302. Backup bidder is 282. Number 6126. Do I have a bidder in the room for 6126? It's circle. Is there somebody here for that one? 6126. Oh, 6127 circled in my book on Dodge Road. Do I have a bidder here on 6127? Right there I do. Let's open it up. 6127, $7,000 well kept house. It was occupied at the time that we went by, and that was like back in June. $7,000 I've got there. Anybody there want to give me $7,100? 7000 going once. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. You want to give me 8000 How about 8500 What about 9000 95, 91. I've got 9000 over here going once. 9000 going twice. 9286 Backup bidder is at 10, uh, what is the back, 763. 
Into the home stretch, number 6128, Fifth Street in Gage Town. Do I have a bidder in the room for 6128? It's circled. Are they here? 6128. I don't have a circle for 6129, but if somebody wants that one, we'll open it up. Anybody here for that one? We already sold 6130. I've got a bid online to open us up on 6131. Parkway Drive, Caro, I've got $1,100. Right behind the hospital, if you fall down and you can't get up, you can crawl and still get there. I need $1,100, I've got it online. Who wants to give me $1,200? Anybody, anywhere, $1,100 online, going once, twice. Sold it online. Anybody here for the last three on that page? I'm gonna read them off in order. If you're here for them, raise your card. 6132, 6133, 6134. On the other side, the last one in the first go round. 6135 North Water Street in Vassar. I've got that circled in my book. Commercial building was a restaurant. You can reopen it. You can make it a taco stand, a whippy dip, whatever you want to do. Anybody in there want to give me 44, 254? It. I've got it right there. Anybody want to give me 40, 45? 44, 250 in the room going once. Twice. You bought it. Get back there and start cooking. Better number is 315, and she's happy about it, and so are we. She had to wait till the end, but she got it. Here's what we're going to do. We've got some property we did not sell. If there's anything in that book you want us to open back up at that minimum bid price, we're going to do so at 20 minutes after 2 o'clock. That's about 10 minutes from now. It gives you time to go through and take a look at what's there. If there's anything in there you want, come and see us. Let us know which one, and we will open them up at 2.20. We're going to talk to the people online, too. They might want us to open a few things up as well.